the Polestar 2 and Android Automotive Operating System. This is a Prudium shift and it's going to be most likely in a car near you in the very near future. But today I'm going to go in depth. How does it function? What does it do? What are the apps like? What are my frustrations and what works really well? Find out this and a lot more using those chapter markers below because yeah, this is going to be a long video. If you want to see content from an Australian perspective about electric vehicles, technologies and more, please do consider subscribing, it's absolutely free. Starting off with your home screen. To get here, no matter where you might be in this app, you just press this little line down the bottom here. This is actually not part of the screen, it's actually a line. And they've replicated it up here just for that consistency of, well, if I do that, what does it do? It shows me notifications. So this is where you might see text messages come in, also where software updates will say, hey, I'm ready to install it. Stepping you through each one um, of the areas one by one, obviously we've got maps, we've got predictive range. This I like a lot. This range assistant actually will show you in real time how much energy the car is using, what your driving style is like and what sort of consumption you're gonna be using if your climate is using up a lot of energy and whether or not you're running the eco climate which is probably a good point to start now on the climate because this with the plus pack actually has the um, heat pump built into it we can reduce the energy required uh, on the car by using on and that's just going to actually um, stop going too high and not going to fan too fast and so on and so forth and you probably can't hear it but the fan is actually well the heat pump rather i can hear it spooling down just slightly now so that's all fine and it's a bit of a cold morning i've got no passenger there on that side so i'm going to turn off my uh, seat heater uh, but i'm going to turn mine down and that's for the steering wheel and that's for my seat if i want to um, change the temperature i can i can just do it through uh, here quite easily if I want to split it, so for left and right, um, you have this little split icon and it changes between the two and I can um, obviously have two different temperatures in this cabin. It's only two zone climate control, so rear passengers get what we get. Um, so now you can see we've got a split temperature between my side and that side. If you want to dive even deeper into the aircon system, um, we press the little fan icon and it looks like you're actually uh, changing uh, auto climate control versus not, but you're not. This is actually where you control it uh, in a deeper sort of fashion. So eco climates are discussed. You've got your um, maximum defroster and rear defroster, which are replicated over here in button form. So I can actually push that and you'll hear them um, spool up and the air will go quite fast now to try and demist um, the screens. And that's enough of that, so we'll turn those off. Um, it has, um, I believe, a HEPA filter or at least something near to that um, in this car and it auto detects it. I haven't actually seen it working as such as so far, insofar as it's automatic, um, but you can hit recirculate and that will ensure that the air inside the cabin is as clean as it possibly can be. Turning your AC on and off, heater on and off, and eco climate. And then conversely, if you want to direct the air in a particular spot, you just tap it and it will turn it on. Uh, tapping it again deselects it. So right now we're going to the screen, we're going to my feet. Uh, that's just now screen, it's feet. But we'll let the car do what it wants. And in this car, you've got four vents across the front, two in the rear, and obviously on, on the windscreen as well. All right, so that's our uh, HVAC system and that's our energy consum consumption system. To go back to our home screen, I'm just gonna press that little line down the bottom and here we are again. Phone is over here, so obviously I can um, call people directly. So, hello people, um, usual sort of stuff here. So if I want to actually dial the number, your contacts are synced with your phone, recents and favorites. I'm gonna do that because I have to blur basically most of the screen out. So you get the idea. We'll go back to home. Um, you have apps integrated into this system and uh, yeah, spoiler alert, it's, it's a great experience and it's a bad experience, but we'll return to that one. When you first get the car, you need to actually uh, start a profile and you can see that we've actually got admin and we've got one, two, three, four, five. So a total of six profiles here. Um, I'm not very certain if you can add more than six, but by selecting one of these, we'll actually configure the seat, mirrors, 
apps, climate, stereo, everything. And uh, so I'm not gonna press it because I'll be moving the seat around and that might bugger my camera up. So I'm not gonna be doing that. And uh, within here, um, you can actually uh, connect your um, like digital key and uh, remotes. And uh, when you when I first did this, I must say it was a bit, a bit I don't know, buggy and it wasn't connecting nicely and I had to do it like three times before it finally connected the digital key to my phone. So in the app, it's a bit slow to connect and we can see right now that the battery is at 38%. The doors are unlocked, the climate is off, which is hilarious because the climate is actually on because I'm sitting in the car. Um, in here you can also schedule timers and also the same too with your charge so in here you can see i've got a schedule that it runs for five and a half hours overnight whilst everyone's sleeping and um, i can lock and unlock the doors uh, there is supposedly a lot more you can do with this app but i to be honest haven't seen uh, a lot of its functionality swiping over you get a little bit of um, uh, you know hey here's a bit about polestar and you can buy stuff too and you know go buy yourself a brand new one and then you have your profile and in here you can manage uh, your account app settings and a bit more but realistically um, i think the experience here with this mobile app is not the same as what it is with tesla um, tesla is more feature rich and if i was to look up on my mobile phone in let's say maps and i want to go somewhere I can send the directions to the car, whereas in this one I can't, which is kind of unusual because this is connected to my digital life. So this actually knows uh, it's me and where I work and uh, what my search history has been through Google. And it's like, well, why not have me able to send the directions to the car? It should come up as a device, I think. And uh, it's a bit frustrating that that's just not the case. But nonetheless, you can um, obviously click on search here and here's me experimenting, playing around. The voice assistant is actually Google and it works quite well, almost all the time. It doesn't always, but you can um, be very specific and say something like, never get me to Water Garden Shopping Center. And there it goes. Uh, conversely, you can use, um, stop that, you can, you can also press on the steering wheel the voice assistant button. Navigate to Jeff's shed. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't understand. I didn't understand either. Navigate to Jeff's shed. Navigating to Melbourne Convention and Exhibition Centre, MCEC. There you go. Let's turn that down. It's a bit warm. Um, by navigating somewhere, it will tell you how much battery you'll have on arrival, what the time will be, how long it will take. Um, you have usual route options, uh, like if you want to say, for instance, avoid toll road, uh, avoid toll roads, freeways, ferries. It's it's Google, so everyone will will know this very well. And uh, if you're used to Teslas you know exactly what this is like. So let me just jump out of that for a second and change my perspective. And so by tapping on the um, icon over here, north up, it's going to always have north to the top of the screen, which I really just like that view. Um, you have this squiggly little uh, line sort of view and then you have the perspective as to, well, relative to me, I want to see mostly where I'm going. Um, it's, it's great, um, no issues here, it's, it's Google and uh, you get real-time traffic updates and so forth. Now let's say I actually want to do something crazy and drive to uh, Sydney. All right, so let's do that. Navigate to Sydney. Navigating to Sydney. All right, this is going to take uh, more than <laughs> the battery has got capacity for right now. So it's going to calculate not only the route, but it's also going to do charging stops as well. So. Uh, let's go add charging stops and we can see the charges that we're going to do along the journey. So you go two, three, four, five, six, and how long each charge is going to take. 
This car goes up to 130 kilowatts, so some of the charges are a bit longer than I would prefer, perhaps. About 35 minutes, 32 minutes, not bad. Can, um, essentially, it's going to say to us, hey, look, around about or 12 o'clock, you're going to do an 18 minute charge, and uh, so on and so forth. What I also love about this system is that you've got shortcuts to charges, eating, shopping, and cafes. Uh, so let's say I want to look at charges and this is actually going to load up the status of those charges and you can see right now that um, it's uh, charge box the one nearest to me oh, it's actually not the nearest one to me um, is uh, got one stall actually in use one of the ultra rapid fast ones <laughs> and uh, the other ones um, are free and you can see one here, Charge Fox over in Coburg is actually out of service. So you get a real time impression as to whether or not something is in use and whether or not it's working, which I think is a brilliant integration. All right, so that's the maps. We'll just go back home and I'm just getting a bit warm. So I'm just going to change this temperature and get it down to 20. That's all fine. All right, coming over to, um, I think, uh, the next screen along and by the way you can actually swipe um, so if you're in this screen here and we're swiping over and we're going to assist we're going to charge and we're going to more and we'll go through each of these quickly but I'll put little chapter markers in so you can have a quick little jump to whatever you need to steering wheel uh, feel you can change the light standard or firm turn off electronic stability control the car is currently in park so let me just put the car in to drive and now we can actually change that to electronic stability control off. Um, one pedal drive, absolutely get used to it folks, it's the best way to drive an electric vehicle. You can treat it like a manual automatic sort of petrol car and coast it, but don't just use it in standard. And creep uh, basically means that when you come to a stop, um, the car will actually slowly move forward, if it's turned on that is, um, and uh, you know, move into an intersection say without you having to touch the accelerator whatsoever but i prefer brake and hold so when the cars come to a complete stop it stays there until i press go again next screen over is our assist and so oh it's saying here there's a uh, error with our lane keeping aid that's new that hasn't happened before but all these functions you can see the little ellipses in the corners you can dive deeper into them to get into different settings. So uh, let's say roadside information, uh, we can do visual and sound. You can do speed offset. So oh, um, if I'm over 5Ks per hour, only let me know then. In Victoria, if you're 2Ks over the limit, you will get a speeding fine. So I don't like that. I'd much rather in uh, single digit increments. Uh, driver alerts on, uh, uh, collision avoidance blind spot indicator it's also in the mirrors there so it tells you that you've got someone in your drive spot and so forth and uh, it's fascinating that that's not working um, driver support so when you press the center button on the left hand side of your steering wheel um, it turns on and off adaptive cruise control cruise control or speed limiter so i i prefer adaptive cruise control Next screen over, we've got charge. And so right now we're at 37% state of charge. We can change the amount that we want to charge the car to when we uh, charge it up and up to a maximum of 32 amps on the AC cycle. Uh, the car comes bundled with a 10 amp, 2.3 kilowatt charger. And uh, so if you go buy yourself a level two home charger, you can go up to a very fast, very respectable, uh, 50, 60, 70 kilometers per hour of additional range by having a more faster charger at home. That's really good English, Chris. <laughs> anyway, uh, so right now there's nothing plugged in and it's got the schedule here so we can actually set it to uh, charge uh, every day at this time and we can turn that off and we can turn that on. And uh, yeah, it's quite simple and straightforward. And uh, notice here, they recommend that uh, to preserve the lifespan of the battery because this is lithium ion to charge 90% and if you go to 100% it gets you that warning again and uh, anything else it doesn't actually say anything so that's fine but I prefer 90% myself. In more we've got car status here so supposedly everything is all good. Um, it's obviously got uh, tire monitoring and uh, so we can actually store the pressures right now but the tires are cold so I wouldn't do that. Service, this is excellent. 
you do not, do not need to service annually and it's saying here that it's 483 days before we actually need to service it and that um, in 23,000 kilometers either or other please go get a service I don't know what they're going to do you can actually pay for your servicing up in advance if you'd like to um, moving over to locking um, so you can have reduced alarm mode uh, so that means less blings and chimes and things like that but uh, to be honest the sounds in this car are not actually obnoxious and so forth so yeah that's all fine auto lock when drive I like that I like all doors to lock please um, remote unlock I, uh, I like all doors to be unlocked but if you're by yourself say you might prefer it to be it just for your driver door that when you hit unlocking your key fob it unlocks that coming through to the visual unlock and lock feedback you can do lock only unlock and both on so yeah what have you interior lighting uh, you've got uh, LED lights throughout including uh, uh, for the ambient lighting and I like uh, my lighting high it's only the one color um, down in the footwell area so it's like a nice uh, cool white sort of color and uh, so I like mine high and I like my interior lighting high and bright as well uh, on the exterior lights you've got corner illumination you've got the adaptive bending lights which is another separate video so go check up here if you want to see what that looks like uh, triple turn signal so just a light little um, indicate it does three little um, uh, blips I wish they could actually change that because I, I prefer five myself uh, welcoming and if you actually have the car on the other side of the road so let's say you take this from the UK over into Europe you can actually change it so that it actually um, alters the uh, uh, controls so to speak well not all controls just some um, home safe light automation so that's basically you know uh, when you come home it keeps the lights on for 30 seconds 60 to 90 moving now to mirrors and um, with the mirrors here uh, I always like the mirrors to fold in thank you very much um, when I reverse the car uh, I like to actually just have the passenger side dip down so I can see it and um, the auto dimming as well so uh, we can do standard dark and light I found standard to be quite good um, it doesn't uh, it's not overly aggressive and it behaves nicely as I expect it to wipers and uh, we can get the wipers into the service position and rain sensor memory is yeah it they've been good actually um, at first I struggled to find how to work them um, that is to say in the automatic mode but once I found it it was easy alrighty I think we are done with that we can actually power off the vehicle here that's just basically putting the standby it's not a true power restart this operating system I've only had one issue with it in my week and a bit with it and uh, that looks like it was clunky it was misbehaving it wasn't uh, fast and responsive and um, so if I just go back to maps for instance and I just want to just circle this around uh, in and out you get the idea it's it's nice and zippy to restart the car if you actually want to restart this system not the actual car because I haven't worked out how to do that yet but I had to restart the system you just press and hold this home button and first it will say to you, hey, screening mode is active, okay, that's all great, but if I keep on pressing and holding the um, home screen, then it will actually um, restart this system after 20 seconds. So let's we'll get out of that now. There we go, we're back. All right. So that concludes our car sort of section, but there are more settings in this. So I'm gonna go there now. Coming to settings, we've got network and uh, internet so this provides um, a connectivity is an electronic sim card uh, we've also got ourselves connected to my Wi-Fi at home uh, it's curious I'm just parked outside the garage and it's actually saying hey uh, I'm not connected at the moment which is fascinating um, so it should be connected and it's always checking for over their updates and it will actually download them while you're whilst you're driving but to install them you need to have the car parked with at least 40% state of charge and then it will actually install it. Um, coming down to the next one, we did the Bluetooth earlier, so we'll skip that one now. In sound, uh, you've got a very good ex experience here where you can direct the sound to, let's say, to the back of the car, just to me or to everyone, and um, you can actually uh, change it in other ways as well, but I prefer all on, thank you very much. 
um, you know it's that by the way um, so you know let's say you got some kids in the back who are sleeping you might want to turn that off it's very nice I like that it's good um, very intuitive uh, surrounds uh, there's 13 speakers in this car and it is awesome it's a Harman Kardon system there's a subwoofer uh, so, I forget what the amperage is but it's very impressive you can get loud it's got quality everything's there and you can actually uh, customize the experience as to how much uh, surround effect you want uh, and I found that it actually works very well so I prefer keeping it sort of all around me so I'm hearing everything that I can possibly hear. Uh, coming down to our next option, our display, um, this is where we can decide our chip computer and we've got different functions in here as to what we see on the pinnacle in front of me and I actually like to see my average energy consumption which today is well uh, today it's running at 20 kilowatt hours per 100 k's definitely a very thirsty car very thirsty uh, moving down to the next option um, voice assistant and uh, stuff like that with Google and uh, this is typical stuff that you're probably used to within Google so I won't dive into that very much at all here at all uh, apps and notification uh, so you've got your default apps okay and uh, yeah we'll get to that very soon um, we've got permissions and special access, very much like Google stuff. Uh, privacy and sharing, so you can turn your location sharing on and off, but essentially it's good to have it because then when you park your car, you can see within your phone as to where your car is. And um, moving then down to Google stuff, again, this is Google stuff that you're very much used to, so I'm not going to be going over that. And then finally in the system, uh, we can change uh, things such as the language that we have, the Google keyboard, um, date and time sort of method, uh, as to whether or not it's automatically set or not, um, the security update, and this is saying it's actually on version 11, and uh, updated that security rather on the 1st of April, and um, there's another software update section here, so now we'll check for updates, and when I first got the car, um, I had to do an update, and that put it to... Um, you know 2.1 so we have a look at the release notes and you can see there's actually regular updates to this car and it's about 10 in total so this is 2.1 the last one had uh, DC charging cable connectivity enhancement bug fixes for charging scheduler charging settings and navigation turn by turn uh, symbol error rectified and then version 2 1.9 1.82 what well, you get the idea there's lots in there um, so that's our settings and now we're going to dive over to the next screen and this screen uh, is both good and annoying and I'll tell you why it's annoying. Uh, you can quickly jump to your favorites that you might have here and you can rearrange things so um, let's say we want to have Spotify in that spot there we we'll just do that. If you've got more than six apps which I've done here just for demonstration purposes you need to do the ellipses to dive into a deeper level this menu and uh, I don't know to get out of this by the way I need to either go there all right which is annoying um, or conversely I um, you know sorry back into here I press this and it minimizes it uh, it's it, it I think you'll get used to it and I'm being picky but that's really annoying next issue I've got is the App Store. Unlike Android Auto where you, you, you can't plug your phone in and actually um, you know have the Android Auto experience this is Android Automotive operating system and it not only does the infotainment but it also controls the car and it integrates with the car so I can do things like turn on all seat warmers sure turning on the seat heater so that's putting all the seat heaters on right now yeah so again we'll turn it off because I don't want that <laughs> uh, toasty 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 with climate um, I, I missed this screen oh my goodness uh, with the auto driver seat so if it's a cold day it's going to put it on to whatever preference you have um, passenger we'll do low steering wheel let's do low and you've got your air quality sensor settings and things like that I missed those before my bad Ah, where am I bad? Okay, anyway, let's get out of climate. Where was I? So, back to the App Store. 
the Android Auto cannot be uh, put into this thing. In September this year, they're going to be adding Apple CarPlay to this system, which is which is lovely. So I'm kind of like, well, why can't I have Android Auto? Because this doesn't function well. It seems to be half baked. And for instance, if I'm in Maps and I want to listen to some tunes and navigate, I now need to jump back out of here like this and then go to, let's say Spotify to modify my music. I do have play pause down here on the um, controller and the volume. And I've also got forward and back over here on my steering controls. But if I want to change my play, uh, my you know, mix here, I need to really jump quite out of whatever I'm in. So again, I'm in maps and I want to uh, change my playlist. I've got no options down here or anywhere to actually go to the music. I think this climate stuff is great and it's, it's good that it's down here. This does disappear by the way, so on some screens it's, it's absent and to get it you can just swipe up from the bottom. There we go. And that's basically taking me home. That's my home key, essentially. So that's really annoying. And the other annoying fact is that because it's a different Android uh, ecosystem, developers, companies who provide apps like Audible, um, they need to actually optimize for this experience. So it doesn't appear in the App Store unless they've done that. So this list of, let's say, stay informed so we can download these apps and listen to any of these sort of things. Um, if I want to have Audible, there's no Audible even though I've got it on my phone and it's a very good app on my phone. I can't have it in here, which is extremely frustrating. And yeah, I've got Google uh, Play books and audio books, but I've, I don't own any books in there. They're all in my audio library. Yeah, it's, it's really annoying. Um, alrighty, here we are. Okay, so that's uh, plug share. Let's see what we can see. We can navigate there and it looks like it's sending instructions to Google Maps. That's uh, interesting, isn't it? So yeah, on arrival, on return, and how long it's gonna take one way. And we've stepped now out of the PlugShare app and we've gone to our Maps thingy, and there it is there. Okay, so yes, there's potential here and it can be improved, but the App Store, I still think is a bit frustrating and underbaked not fully realized. Surely they can run whatever app is optimized for mobile phones just full screen. If you remember the iPad experience with Apple, that's what they did. They just expanded the apps to fill the screen when they first came out. They were not, not very many were optimized at all. So um, I think they should just do the same here and offer up the tens of thousands of apps that you could have on this. And uh, realizing that the security and the um, there's a, a wall between this and the car, and uh, so I don't think there's any harm in doing that, I believe. I could be wrong, but I believe it's completely safe to do so. Don't judge my gaming abilities, people. I'm doing this one-handed. We should do this two-handed. Ah, anyway, all right. <gasps> there's your game, folks, Polestar. <laughs> oh, so be it. All right, coming back over. So that's our. <laughs> that's fascinating. Why is why is this game up in the navigation area, not down probably here? That is fascinating. Let me see if I can move that. Oh, I can. There we go. Much happier. <laughs> okay. Um, Finishing off this uh, in-depth review of the Android Automotive Experience, you've got your manual, um, which is actually pulling it down from the internet. Um, so you can do quick jumps to you know different sections, and it will say, "Hey, here's um, you know about the bonnet and how you access it." And um, there is some awesome some videos in here, which I'll try to find, but I think we're running out of time here, folks. Um, and if you want to say, look, here's me, windscreen wipers. <laughs> um, it tells you how to actually, in, um, you know, engage it and what they are. Um, it's, it's, it's great. Let's 
we just had a message there and that was awesome um i've had to blur it out for privacy's sake but um that was great and so now that message is actually um sitting up here through my notification screen so um oops i just swiped that too far um so if i wanted to actually um, listen to it i could and if i want to reply to it um very easy and that brings us back to our home screen okay well i hope you've enjoyed this video and yeah i find this uh, operating system to be just as good as on most others it's not at tesla level just yet but it's close and i feel that because it's got google behind it um it's got so much potential and it could be a, it, it'll, it'll be awesome probably very very soon the addition of apple carplay in september this year i think uh, will make a lot of uh, apple people out there very happy indeed and this is definitely the future and i'd like to see it on a lot more cars so if you've enjoyed this video please do consider giving me a subscribe it's absolutely free if you want to support the channel and get behind the scenes news polls and stuff that you just don't get here on youtube consider joining me over here on patreon where you get all this and a lot more from as little as $2.50 per month and otherwise you be good and you be green